TV, your husband lifestyle channel. Today on How TV. If there's something I could have changed, I would have, um, I would have wished to start my university education a lot earlier than I did. You know, I had problems with jump and all that, so it kind of delayed me a bit. So if I could take back those years from jump, I would have wished I started earlier so that I would just go into the outside world because that's where the main, the main thing lies. So I think if there's anything I can change, it's a bit to cut back <laughs> those years. I regret not um, not being so interested in Arabic when I was young, when I used to go to um, Arabic schools. Like, I would have loved to really know about Islam when I was younger. So now I'll be really strong in it and I won't be at the level of knowledge I have with Islam now. I think it should have been when I was younger. I would have loved to you know, by Islam when I was younger, so now I've been deep in it. Well, uh, as a Muslim, you know, if I have anything to regret, it's disobedience to Allah. That's all. But so long as I haven't di disobeyed Allah, then there's nothing to regret. One thing I know I regret was that okay, when I was small and I was they put me in this Arabic school and my wife left, then they traveled out. And I was, my parents enrolled me in another Arabic school. And I left, I didn't finish the Arabic school. So I just left, like, I know enough and I just left. So my regret is that I would have stayed and just finish up. Because I didn't get the time to now even go back and learn as much as I, I would have. But, so that was, that was one of the regrets. My greatest regret was that I was not fortunate to memorize the Holy Quran when I was at my tender age. I had the opportunity, but I don't know, just not. I was not just a person. One thing I regret, I I can't read my Quran as fluent as I want, and I'm sure it was because when I was younger, you know, kids now when they force you to go to Arabic school, you're just not talent. You don't want to listen. You don't want to learn. So now, if I like, had a picture of how I would feel now, maybe I would have paid more attention and um, done more. I will still go back to Arabic school anyway. One thing I regret are my past mistakes. And my past mistakes, if I understand Islam, that will he forgive me? What if he doesn't forgive me? Since I don't know that, so I keep that in my mind. So I still see it as, well, I hope He's going to forgive because you see, he forgives, but I still don't know. I'm not, there's no clarity that he has forgiven me. He might forgive from other people, but me, I don't know. So that's, that's one thing that I don't know. I'm still scared about. Let me say it's uh, painful sometimes, but definitely in every man's life, say, sometimes you regret. Yet I regret not really chasing the dean at the early stage of life. At least if I've chased it at the early stage of life, I believe I would have gotten uh, further than where I am presently, you know. One thing I think I, may, I might have had a regret for is uh, marrying a little late. And the reason is because if I had married earlier, I think I would have accomplished more than I have done presently. I regret not knowing all the Quran by heart, 
not memorizing everything and you know and because subhanallah because the the time is kind of tight now you know it's difficult to say oh um, I'm memorizing this thing it's I don't know it's it's different it's not it's not easy it's not that it is not easy as it seems like oh, oh like okay you come for instance you say you give yourself a target to say oh um, during Ramadan or this one month or for instance I want to sit down and memorize like from I want to memorize like five surahs for instance and you know because of the hustle and bustle of Lagos uh, this thing but by the time you wake up five o'clock and you come back like nine o'clock like tomorrow tomorrow oh no no weekend weekend and you know just i just regret it that i've not i didn't do it earlier on and now the target just seems not achievable i was really an islamic school then but they're like they're only taking guys for the office class and all the ladies are not going so it was really painful then i couldn't go with them so that was one of my regrets i think that i've been making my dad die as a muslim Instead. Maybe I'll, I will have go back to Arabic school more than the way I did. I'll have learned more about Arabic. Um, what I regret was not seizing the opportunity to learn more about my Lord when I had it. Growing up, our parents sent us to uh, Arabic school, but we <laughs> we thought it was it was just a waste of, waste of time. We always when we leave home we. Most of the time, don't get to Arabic school. We branch somewhere else, maybe to go and watch soccer or something, or play or something. Now I regret it because it is very difficult combining my school studies and Arabic studies now. There are a lot of things, but I think one of them is when I was younger, I had the opportunity to read a lot to develop the habit of reading, but I didn't. So now I wish I had, I had actually put a lot of effort into reading. With every new day, I wake up with a greater sense of fulfillment and purpose, and serving the Creator through prayer and then serving His creation for His sake. A certain inner happiness develops. When you give to others, what you gain is greater than what you give. If nothing else, just knowing that you've helped someone makes you feel good. Without this feeling, most people would never volunteer for anything. Service brings people together. It spreads love and creates unity spreads happiness. Some people think service is limited to volunteering alone, but the Prophet peace be upon him taught us to see it in a much broader light. Take for example when he helps Salman al-Fadisi by giving him the gold he needed to free himself from slavery. This example inspired me when I saw my colleague at work in financial distress. I made it a habit to greet Mike every day and ask him how he was doing, so I could tell from his body language that something was wrong. So yesterday I finally asked him why he looked bothered. He opened up to me saying he needed a suit for an important personal meeting and he was unable to afford it. He didn't expect me to randomly offer to lend him the money. After all, he barely knew me. He asked me repeatedly if I was sure, and I assured him I was. I then told him good luck with your meeting tonight, 
And not only did he thank me, but even invited me to that meeting, which was actually going to be with his dad for the first time in years. I said, sure, I'd be honored. And just like that, a new friendship was born. What I know about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is that he would always exceed the expectations of those who didn't know him. A stranger would instantly love him because he was always serving those around him. In fact, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that the best of people are those that benefit people the most. So how befitting that the best of Allah's creation never once missed an opportunity to serve. I asked the man if there was anyone helping him carry his things. He insisted he didn't need any help. But it was really painful to see him carrying boxes alone for so long. At that moment, I remembered the story where the Prophet, peace be upon him, saw an old woman that didn't know him carrying her groceries and helped her even as she warned him to stay away from Muhammad. So I asked him to please let me help him. He seemed embarrassed and honestly even a little skeptical about me at first, but he was too exhausted to say no. The man's smile as we finished moving in his stuff reminded me of Mike's smile when I gave him the money. It was a smile that expressed relief and gratitude. Suddenly this man who was once skeptical about me was thanking me warmly and assuring me that he'd never forget how I helped him. I smiled and said, welcome to the neighborhood. But this story wasn't yet over. The Prophet's sayings about service are plentiful, while his deeds of service are countless. Rasulullah, you never missed an opportunity to serve and to inspire others to serve as well. You always led by example. There you were digging in the trench, side by side with the companions, fetching firewood, carrying stones, in fact even cracking them with your axe. You embodied the concept of a servant leader and taught that service is a privilege, whereas leadership is a responsibility. It was a busy day and I barely made it to the meeting with Mike and his dad. As I walked in, Mike stood up to greet me and introduce me to his father. They say it's a small world. I say it's Allah's world. And how amazing is his decree. Me and Mike's father really hit it off that night. And as we stood up to leave, he asked me, by the way, where are you from? I paused and said, I'm an American, a Muslim American. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, whoever relieves a believer of distress in this world, Allah will relieve him of distress on the Day of Judgment. Allah is in the cause of his servant as long as he is in the cause of his brother. Rasulullah, the light of your sunnah shines bright even today. O oh Allah, allow people to love him through loving us and to love you through loving him. TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. In a time of darkness and green. It is your light that we need You came to teach us how to live Muhammad, Ya Rasulullah You were so caring and kind Your soul was full of light You are the best of mankind Muhammad, khayru
chosen one From luxury you turn away And all night you would pray Truthful in every word you say Muhammad, Ya Rasulallah Your face was brighter than the sun Your beauty equal by none You are Allah's chosen one Muhammad, Khayru Khalqillah Pray to be close to you on that day and see you smile when you see me. Hal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. What is the best night mentioned in the Holy Quran? Um, that is a night of Laila Kadri. Laila Kadri. The night of um, Majesty. Laila Kadri. Final answer. That's my final answer. Are you sure? Very sure. Are you sure? Yes. Final answer. Absolutely sure. Did the Ramadan? Ah, yes. Final answer. Yes. You were right, Lalatul Kadri. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You were right. Thank you very much. You were right, Lalatul Kadri. Which surah of the Holy Quran is called the mother of the Quran? You want options? Okay, A. Shout the class, shout to Rahman, shout to Yasin, and shout to Al Fatiha. The mother of the Quran, shout to Al Fatiha. God bless you. Maybe Yasin. Maybe Yasin. Final answer. Yes. Final answer, Yasin. Oh, you are wrong. The answer is shout to Al Fatiha. What is the best edible thing mentioned in the Quran? The best edible thing mentioned in the Quran. Most edible. I think banana. Dates? Olives. Now you said two things, you choose one. That's final answer. Banana. Are you sure? Um best edible thing. I can't I can't think of it. Final answer. Final answer. Time is up. The answer is only. Only? Yes. Honey. A thing. I actually need to think. No, no, you said food. I said food. Then why not go for I actually need to think. So at least you've learned something today.
What is the most disliked thing by Allah, though it is halal and mentioned in the Holy Quran? Do I repeat myself? What is the most disliked thing by Allah, though it is halal and also mentioned in the Holy Quran? Do you want options? Yes. No, do you want options? So what is the final answer? Divorce. Divorce. Do you agree with him? Yes. Do you agree with your brother? Yes. You trust your brother? Yes. You are correct. The answer is divorce. What is the smallest animal mentioned in the Olu Quran? Options, please. <clears throat> Options. Okay, let's go. A. Spider. B. Honey bee. C. Gnat. D. Amoeba. Yeah. I think it's ami Amoeba. Amoeba. Final answer. Gnats. Final answer. Are you asking me is it the answer? Is that your final answer? You want to ask the audience? 50 50? Is that your final answer? Ask the audience. If you have any 50 50 and that, okay. I think I'll still go for that. You still go for that, Amoeba. The first one is what? Option A is what? Option A is Spider. Now you said two things. Final answer Spider. Okay, time up. The answer is Nat, not Amoeba. Uh, the answer is Nat. G N A T. Dumb. Wrong. The answer is not G N A T. No, I, final answer. I asked really? you final answer. Hal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Hafiz Oyetoro, popularly known as. Saka, you are on to our TV. Keep watching our TV. And now bless you as you do so. Masala. Join us again tomorrow for more. Al Amin. Al Amin, the trustworthy. In whatever thing you meet him, being trustworthy. I love that. If we can imbibe with that. Well, he talks about you respecting women, treating women right. And then you place women high, your mother, at, at the time when you ask that, whom should I respect more? said it three times, your mother, your mother, your mother, then comes your father. That's about women. How TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel.